Hey, welcome to the shop. It's another beautiful day in the neighborhood. Um, so, uh, last time uh, we were putting some shellac uh, on the pieces of cherry that I'd milled out. This is on that picture frame project. And the shellac's dried. It's been a day, which is good. Um, and Busted up some pieces of uh, 220 sandpaper, uh, and I'm getting ready to uh, put my first sand on these things. My typical process, and, and I'm, I don't imagine that this is going to be any different. My typical process is to, uh, uh, I'll have this in just a second. My typical process is to put uh, two coats of shellac on pieces. Uh, it's shellac, sand, shellac, sand, and then typically I'm ready for whatever's next. Lately I've been using tongue oil varnish and kind of liking it, so I'll probably, uh, unless something dramatic comes up, I'll probably be doing that. Anyway, so that's the next thing I'm going to do is sand these with 220 sandpaper and get them wicked smooth and get a coat of shellac on them. Let's see how that goes. Okay. So, you know how sanding goes, you uh, sequence, right? Do one surface all the way, then do the next surface, rather than a little of this and a little of that. Now, what happens, and you can, I'm sure you know the drill here, you have a tendency to use the sandpaper up, so to speak, in that one spot. But it's better than chasing all the pieces because you get lost otherwise. So um, it's just shellac. It's not really hurting the sandpaper. It's, lo it's, it's loading it. So I'll, I'll probably fiddle with it a couple of times and chip it. Um, but uh, then I want to hit the back also because there's no point in leaving the back rough. Anyway, so now let's work this fillet here on this molded edge. The top of this has a OG in it, so I'll do that next. Spot I didn't do quite so well. Um, now, what this first coat of sandpaper, what this first coat of sealer did, was it set the fibers on the surface of the wood and fix them. Like glue. Pretty nice. Um, which means that they won't bend out of the way. And I should be able to sand them so that they're smooth to touch. And then back to that getting loading the paper. But you know what? Paper is pretty inexpensive. And the product is great, smooth, nice, nice, nice. All right, so that being done, it didn't ruin the paper, but you know. The fillets are the worst, little square notches, because there's only one place for the sandpaper to go in that fillet, which means you're using the same edge, same tiny, tiny piece of sandpaper to do all of it. A little bit frustrating. And that should be about it. Nice. All right, now we'll start and switch over to another surface. Start on this bead. Oh boy, boy, that feels so good. Just a little bit of shellac.
great. I don't know how much of this you want to wash, but I'm going to continue doing this until I get all the surfaces ready for another coat. All right, now the back. I just want to whack the back. I don't. I'm not trying to do anything to it. Just get the uh, the little bits of pecky shellac in the surface knocked off. It's never going to be seen. The drips don't matter. I just want it smooth. All right, done. Do another one. So, in case you're wondering what this is, this I'm going to use as a molding for a picture frame. This right here was a chair rail in an 18th century house here in Portsmouth. And I wanted to make a replica of this and I knew that I didn't have the talent to make this by hand. I don't have the tools for it or the talent to make something as, uh, this is delicate, tiny little shapes that truthfully I don't have the tools for at all. So I made a drawing of it and sent it away and had knives cut so that I can put this in a machine and spit it out. I knew that I was going to be using it for not just the replacing of the, of the chair rail, which is a piece of pine, but I was also going to be making a handrail to match it. And so that's why I went, I guess, in the end to the extent of doing this because I had the same theme I was going to use for both the chair rail and the handrail. Now that I've got it all paid for, the knives all paid for, and it's like maybe I can use this as a picture frame also. So we'll see how this works out. But I thought you'd get a kick out of seeing this gloved up I mean, you can see it's, it's, it's filthy and the rest of that, and it's covered with, you know, many, 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 many layers of paint. Uh, and, you know, it's been rubbed and worn and hammered and whatnot, but uh, it's still fairly intact, and, and from it, I can make a copy. And that's where we are. a little break um, yeah, and more sanding. Ooh. Being in a tiny little spot, one little spot, 
using the same edge of the piece of sandpaper really, really gobs it up quickly. Oh well, we'll get through this. Lovely, lovely. Uh, you can't help but laugh, though I'm, I'm known in my household as a, a person that makes very heavy picture frames. And I'm, I'm chastised from time to time. And, you know, I won't say belittled, but, but they do sort of chuckle amongst themselves. The women folk, you know. Uh, that I, I don't have a sense of proportion and scale when it comes to picture frames, which is probably true. And while, you know, we all want to improve, uh, not that much. <laughs> there must be a reason why I think of frames as needing to be heavy and bold. I don't know. Maybe I was raised wrong. But this is going real well, regardless of whether it's too big or too whatever. It's going well. I'm liking it. So, it'll be fine. Okay, so I think I'm now going to do this hollow part right here. Okay. This won't take much longer, and then, whoa, look at that. Um, and then I'll uh, obviously uh, throw another coat of shellac on it. That will be tonight's, probably, I used some old, gone by, you know, old, thickened shellac for the first coat. I think I'm going to use a lighter, fresher coat for the uh, shellac for the second coat. Something that doesn't have as much uh, body, as they say. That's all in all going pretty well. All right, now. get all of the pieces and parts, you know, all these little fillets. If you get them some molding spots, sort of get themselves. All right. Pretty much done. Pretty much. Pretty much. Nice. All right. Just a little bit on the top. Now, I'm going to have to put a rabbit in this for the glass and the, the actual picture and matting. I haven't done it yet. That rabbit's going to go down here. Table saw is kind of tied up in the middle of a, 
operation. Can't move it at the moment. Hopefully tomorrow. Um, so I haven't touched that, but I don't think the the getting the shellac and the rabbit. Maybe I'll splash some in at some point into the rabbit. But the rabbit pretty much doesn't matter. It's going to get stuffed with glass and matting. But the back edge is sharp. And I think I'm gonna I think I'm gonna hit it with some sandpaper also. Just slightly round it. If I do it now, then finishes will get on it. If I do it later, I'll be cutting finishes off. So I should have done it before is the point. Anyway, that's it. No one will cut themselves on it now. The arras. Alright. Do the same thing on this one. All right, that is two pieces, no waiting. All right, so now it's uh, get the shellac out and throw a couple uh, brushfuls on, see how it looks. I'll bring it back in a minute. Shellac, little cup. <coughs> Dipping cups, you know. <coughs> oh, goodness gracious. Okay, so I'm going to throw a little bit of shellac in this, not much, not that much. <coughs> so this is clean shellac. You keep it that way. Nothing will go back in that. I'll throw it in the other bucket. So now, I'm going to open this effing thing. Like that. <coughs> so I'm going to put a little thinner in. About that much. I'm sorry, I sound like an old man, but what's wrong with screw caps, you know? Hold on. Brush, shellac. Mixes pretty quickly. This is a gone-by brush, but we don't care. You know what? I should have started on the back. Nobody's watching here. It's a good solid coat on the back. It's good. Move on.
right, so that is coated, and you shouldn't go over shellac as I'm doing when you're doing it for a finish, because it will drag. It will it will as a, for a finish. It will do a much better job if it's laid down. But I'm going to sand all of this. And so I wouldn't, I'm looking for evening it out. And that looks pretty good to me. smarter let's be smarter because we can always do better right do the back first do the whole back first saw these to might have them make the frame. I'm thinking I'm thinking I may want to actually put a coat of uh, finish on them before I get to that stage. I think I'm going to put a coat of uh, varnish on before I cut them to the might have them into the frame. I think. It's the sanding. It'll, they'll sand out a lot easier if they're in strips like this. They just will. This is good. This is good. This is, uh, yeah, it's, it's laying down. I'm thinking about right now, thinking about when I actually go to varnish this. I'm going to have the same problem with it, running into these, uh, particularly this little cavity right here, this declivity, uh, and loading it. And I, I see it happening with the shellac, because the shellac is dark, and so it, it makes it very dark. It won't be so bad with the varnish. It's, mm, it's amber, but not, nowhere near as much as this. Anyway, all right, done. I'll put this on the rack to dry. This is done. I'll put it in my slop pail where I keep my brushes so that I don't ever have to clean them. Although they're, you know, it's less than perfect, but there you have it.
close this up, put this in the drying rack, and, uh, you know, we'll get ready to do the next thing. Uh, thanks for watching. Uh, we're all, uh, we're all trying to do a good job, right? Keep doing it.